So up until this point, uh, we've been dealing with situations where we have just the regular, normal, kind of standard, generic, vertically oriented curtain wall. But when we need to have glazing that uh, might occur, let's say on a roof or on a wall that overhangs a little bit, in other words, it's not vertically oriented, we've got a few simple tools that we can use to achieve that. The first of which is going to be really, really simple. So what I've got here is just the beginnings of a shed roof building. And uh, just to finish off this building, I'm going to create a set of walls that are attached to this roof. So once I've created that roof or those walls, sorry, I'll just select them and click attach top base. It will then be waiting for me to select a roof to attach them to, giving me that situation. Uh, remember the way that I achieve a shed roof is just by making sure that the sketch of the roof has only one sketch line where define slope is checked. If the other sketch lines don't have this checked, as these do not, they will not define a slope. So of the four lines, only this one has a slope defined. That's how I get a shed roof. So in this situation, really easy. All I have to do is just select that roof. And instead of accepting the default, which in this case was a basic roof, generic 300 millimeter, I have the option down at the bottom here to do slope glazing. What will that will give me is basically just one large curtain wall panel. It looks like there's nothing there, but if I add a bit of color here by using the shaded visual style, you'll see it's got a bit of a blue tint. So that's a glass panel. And like when we use the basic curtain wall tool that gives us just a simple curtain wall panel, I can add detail to this by going to the architecture tab and selecting curtain grid and then adding additional details, putting this one large panel up into smaller panels. And I get temporary dimensions to help me do that with a little bit more accuracy. When that's done, I can then add further detail, specifically mullions, by going back to the architecture tab, clicking on the mullion tool. And in this case, since there's no mullions on this panel or on this wall or this roof, uh, I can just use the all grid lines option here. And that way, when I click on any part of this, it'll add all the mullions. So there is something that would mimic a glazed roof. Okay, so that's one way that we can achieve sloped glazing or some sort of a non-vertically oriented curtain wall. Now I can modify this a little bit if that just looks too much like a roof and I want to maybe indicate that something might be a wall instead. Remember that because this is a roof, I have properties over here in the properties window that uh, give it a 30 degree slope in this case. If I wanted to go with something much steeper, let's say 60 degrees, it will modify that. So this is where I might be able to get into stretching the definition a little and doing a sloped wall, a glazed sloped wall that was in fact actually a roof. But uh, for that situation, we'll look at something a little bit different. And this is where we're going to get in an introduction to the idea of massing. So what I'm going to do here is just uh, go to a main floor view. And I'm going to go now to the massing and site tab. And on the massing and site tab, there's a conceptual mass panel where I'll find the in place mass tool. Now, when I create a mass object, I'm essentially creating formwork. So like on a construction site, when I put up plywood and other forms that I will eventually pour concrete into, the concrete taking the shape of that formwork, I'm kind of doing the same thing here with massing objects. I'm creating a shape that then I can apply a wall or a curtain system or a floor to. We're going to keep this really simple at the start. We won't do anything like uh, what's suggested by the graphic that just popped up. Uh, but eventually we can see how we'll be able to use the same concept to create some curving objects. So to start with, just activate in place mass and you'll see a little prompt pop up here describing the visibility of the mass objects. I'll just click close to accept that. It'll then show me a prompt here with a name for this mass. I'll click the default to accept that. And what I'm going to do now is just create two profiles, a smaller rectangle on the bottom, a larger rectangle on the top. And essentially this will create a blend uh, like what we saw when we were looking at the generic model in place objects. So I'll Click here to create a rectangle on the bottom, keeping it fairly small here, nothing larger than 10 meters. And then I want to create a similar rectangle on the top. I want to make sure that this is on level two. So I have to make sure that I choose set to change the work plane. Otherwise the profile would just be on the same level as the first rectangle. So I'll click set and then I can choose from this list that appears on the options bar and choose level two. If I want confirmation, I can always just click here on show just to confirm which work plane is actually current. 
And there's the confirmation there that I'm, I'll be working on level two. I'll stay in my 3D view and use the view cube, clicking on the top. And the intention here is that I want to create a rectangle that's just a little bit larger on one side so that the blended object that it creates will have an overhanging wall on the south face. So I'll click here on rectangle and just drag out, as I said, a rectangle that matches the dimensions on each side except the south. And when I do that, you can see that I've got similar rectangles but the blended extrusion that's created when I click on create form, which I'll show you in a second, will give me something that has an overhanging south wall. This is a little different than when I was in the uh, model in place components where I just had to click on a check and it did it automatically. Here I'm going to click on the bottom rectangle, hold down control, select the top rectangle, and then click on create form. That will give me that blended shape. And it looks rather empty because it's just form work essentially. So when I click on finish mass, now I've got a finished mass object to which I can apply a curtain system. And I do that by going to the masking and sight tab and then just selecting curtain system. And I then click that overhanging wall, select it, you'll see the blue highlight. And to finish, I just click on create system. And like what I saw with the slope glazing, it gives me a simple curtain wall. This one happens to have some grids, no mullions though. If I need to modify those grids, I would select them, change the temporary dimensions. I can also go to the architecture tab and add additional grids. And when I've got the grid work all set up, then I can go back to the architecture tab, click on the mullion tool and add the mullions.